Good evening, and welcome once again to the Velastin Circle, a D&D 5e adventure in a homebrew setting brought to you by Penance RPG, an actual play podcast and Twitch variety stream. You can find out more about Penance RPG at penancerpg.com or in the stream information below. I'm Luna Wolf, an occasional variety streamer and creator of the Velastin setting. I'll be guiding our cast through the trials that await them tonight. And for cast introductions, starting with Ari A. It always has to be me to start, doesn't it? Hello, I am Dragon. Um, I play Ari A, who is an Asimir Ranger. They are... They were generally quite happy with life and how this world was going um, during their training and at the very start of setting out on their circle. Um, But they're now a bit... concerned (laughs) by a whole... a whole bunch of things. Um, And we don't really... There's lots of things that we are still looking for answers for. And having answers would make her feel a lot better. That's reasonable. Uh, Silic. Hello, I'm Eden. Uh, my character is Silic. He's a total paladin. And similarly, crises of faith abound. Um, we've witnessed otherworldly things that shouldn't go on in a place with one deity. And uh, yeah, reasons to question are there. Uh, we've got our new companion who's not necessarily aware of all of this right now, so trying to keep this under wraps is uh, certainly on the cards today. Um, until it isn't, <laughs> I suppose. Um, but yeah, that, that's my character. That's all good. And Jack? Hi, I'm Amy. I play Jack, our little rock gnome. He is our little thief as well. Um, he's also probably the naivest out of all the bunch because um, he's just happy to be going about his business with his friends and helping those along the way because um, he's a helpful sort sort our jack um he's welcoming of our new friend though he's a little bit um hanging back a bit he's like well, well, well you can you can join in but um uh just ignore coogee <laughs> it's fine it's all good yeah yep. that's jack and malik sire hi uh, I'm Coakley, sometimes known as Ian, and I'm playing Malixire, a divine soul sorcerer tiefling. Um, as far as I'm aware, everything's great in the world, and I have had no reasons to have any kind of crisis of faith whatsoever. We'll see how long that lasts. Anything could happen in the next half hour. <laughs> yes. Okay. So, where we left... Our, uh, our party um, was having just retired to bed. Um, I seem to recall that uh, Malik, Sire and Silic took a room. Yes. Um, and Ari, Ah, Jack, and Kuji took the other room. Yeah, I think so. So, that is where we will reconvene. Okay. What were you planning to do overnight? Had you set any plans out? Um, We had talked about praying and uh, having a little kind of, uh, I don't know, recouping of the faith, let's say. (laughs) <laughs> so I suppose we'll be doing that for a little while, at least. That's fair. I'm trying to remember if Aria was going to speak to uh, Opener. I think you spoke I think to Opener. It. Yeah, I think you spoke to Opener in the uh, in the latter part of the last session. Mm-hmm. I think you did, yeah. My notes for last session are sadly lacking. I have that we have we had decided to head to Riverford. 
um, to find a circle representative and we were at the Hicks Rest. And that's all I've got written down <laughs> for last time. I've got a tiny bit more. I've got that we went for a swim and then we went to the inn <laughs> and there was a dwarf barman. And that's, that's the end of my notes. I have a wand. You do have a wand. Oh yeah, you got a wand. Are we we're 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 not at Riverford yet, are we? You we're are you are in the in, in oh, the no, inn are. at Riverford. We yes. are at Riverford. Yeah, yeah, we are at Riverford. Okay. Okay. I suspect mm. that. I don't know. Jack, do you think that we need to keep watch tonight? I don't think so. I think it'd be alright. Seems alright. Yeah. I mean, Silic's praying away with Malakazar. So, we should be alright. Well, I guess we should catch up and sleep while we can. Well, it may be easier tomorrow. Mm. Then we'll be rested. We'll be rested. And then we can do a lot of more investigations. Yeah. And go talk to um the circle rep, see what's going on. Or have we done that already? I can't remember. Um I think the problem was that the circle rep didn't have any information, which is why they sent Malik Sire. Ah. So I'm not yeah. sure how the circle are going to be particularly useful at this point. The circle expects you, based on your discussion with Fortung yes, uh, in the previous uh, afternoon, the circle expects you to continue your loop. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I don't think they're going to... They're not going to give us any answers. No. Our best bet for getting answers is going to be... Carrying on with all the stuff we're not telling the circle about. Like carrying on and seeing where um what answers we can glean as we go along. You have a look at all the hidden truths. It's, or well, hidden questions. Cause anything that comes out is just more questions. So yeah. true. A lot of confusing things okay uh, i'm going to catch up on some sleep then okay that seems absolutely i'm going to sort fine. my bag yep i'm going to sort my bag for tomorrow and then i'm going to go to bed okay so malik Sire, and silik are going to sit and pray for a little while are you looking for anything in particular here or just a little bit of centering um, I think as a paladin, um, Silic's going to be kind of reaching out to some extent and and trying to, as much as he can, feel some connection to the, his deity, Armand, and try and get some feeling of like what's surely the Lord has has a reaction to what's occurred. There must be it, it's all knowing. Surely it will give me some kind of sense of well being to to reconnect. Okay. Malik Sai, are you looking for anything in particular? Uh, no. Just happy enough to pray, but if I can see that Silic is having some, you know, some minor crises of faith, then I'm more than happy to kind of provide as much help as I can and maybe try and think of a few good parables or something that might help to link in. Okay. Um... So, you sit peacefully, you, um, you commune in the way that you have been trained with Armand, um, and to a reasonable degree, it is comforting. Um, Silic, you're not necessarily getting quite as much reassurance from uh, from it as you might have hoped for, um, because 
there's nothing there's nothing of substance there's the mm -hmm. general reassurance it's very nice it's not very helpful okay I don't think it would he would let it show too much but Silic would probably not necessarily yeah he, he couldn't be that reassured by it so he's, he's gonna kind of try and hide this and go through the motions of the rest of these prayers and what mm -hmm. have you and build up to a conclusion I guess where we can kind yeah. of finish the praying and he can be left with his doubts okay that's fine um unless and I don't think uh, I don't think it's the case, but unless Malaxar has any existing reason to believe you are having a crisis of faith, um, then there'd be no reason for him to particularly pay heed to exactly the forms you were using here. Um, and I don't recall you having had a discussion about anything that would expose any of the underlying issues. Because you've literally just met him. <laughs> Pretty much. We don't know you yet. There was a little bit of awkward conversation trying to skip past certain pieces of information, but yeah, I think otherwise, yeah, under wraps for now. Um, so your prayer se prayer session is uh, is concluded to varying levels of success. Um, are you both just going to then settle down to sleep? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, I think similarly. Like, it's been a long journey, lots of action packed days. So, uh, yeah. Silic will, I suppose, Malachi hasn't witnessed this yet. So, Silic will turn <laughs> towards him and in the middle of the room, give him a nod and say, Well, it's been a very tiring day, and uh, I thank you for your company, and we'll see what tomorrow brings. I'll bid you a good day. And he pops his arms and legs and head into his body, and the shell tumbles to the floor in what is his, his customary way of going to sleep. Yeah, Malixire smiles at the sight of an enormous turtle shell hitting the floor, and <laughs> yeah, rolls back into bed. Turtle's gonna turtle. <laughs> yep. Okay. So, um,. Everyone settles down to sleep perfectly fine. No issues there. Um, in what must be the wee small hours, Malak Sire, you're awoken by a clap of thunder. As you open your eyes, you can see a glorious purple lightning storm is occurring on the other side of the closed shutters. Mm. Then I guess I will have to look over and see if uh, my companion has awoken as well. Nope. There's, uh, he's, he certainly isn't indicating that he's uh, awake. Then I'll walk over and open the shuttles and have a look outside. Okay. Um, outside, as far as the eye can see, is only purple lightning. You can't make out any buildings through it. You can't see an end to it. If you look up, it extends as far as you can see above you. You can see down to the ground, but you can't see any specific features that you may have noticed on your way into the inn. In the middle of the lightning storm is a glowing light. Hmm. I reckon in that case I'll be closing the shuttles and uh, waking up, waking up, uh, Silic to see if I can get some another pair of eyes to have a look, make sure that I'm not dreaming. Okay, you close the shutters. You try to rouse Silic. There's absolutely no response. Uh, right. Well. Yes, the next best thing is going to be to possibly uh, head outside, head out of the room and see if there is anyone else who can verify what I'm seeing. Okay. You as you open the door to the hallway, 
The only thing you can see in front of you is purple light. Then I guess I am going to have to shut that door as well. <laughs> not, not feeling particularly confident. Um, ah, and hmm. Yeah, I think it, I, th I think at this point I've went from politely trying to rouse Selick into full on kicking the side of his shell, <laughs> like like rocking it back and forth. To try and get some kind of reaction. There is absolutely no reaction whatsoever, and it doesn't feel like it ought to be able to contain a creature of Silic's size. As in, it feels too light? Yep. Too small? Can I pick it up? You can. Oh. Okay, that's not great. So my new friend is dead. There appears to be some kind of terrible purple lightning hell outside. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna reopen the the door. Because okay. that appears to get me the closest to the lightning. Okay. Uh and then I'm gonna find something uh I don't even think I have a quarter staff or anything, but I might need to possibly grab a pillow off the bed and try and sort of poke it into the <laughs> uh, into the lightning and see what happens. Okay. Are you going? Are you going to hold on to it and put it out, or are you going to throw it? I hold on to it and put it out. Okay. Um, you push it out into the light. The light plays around it. Um, it doesn't come through the threshold, uh -huh. um, so it scatters slightly across your hand if you push your hand a little further. Um, it looks like the pillow is blowing in a breeze. Uh -huh. Alright, I think my next bet is going to be to have to pick up the presumably empty turtle shell that I have in the room with me, hold it out in front of me like a shield, and walk outside. <laughs> okay. As far as I can tell, you're not in the shell, so it's fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. So you step into the hallway. Mm -hmm. You are swept from your feet by a wind, uh, mm -hmm. which takes you out through what would have been a door um, when you entered this evening, um, and then up and onto the rooftop of the inn. As far as you can tell with a quick look around, you're directly above your room. And everything is still terrible purple lightning. Exceedingly purple lightning. Um, which is making some lovely patterns on the turtle shell. I'm sure it is. Uh, okay, is there any way to get to... I mean, is there any other buildings nearby? Or is it just, as far as I can tell, this singular building? Uh, the only thing you can see is this portion of the building. Mm. The roof disappears into, yes. uh, into a cloud of purple lightning within a few feet of you on either side. The glowing light is growing closer to you. Well, it might be time for a leap of faith. I'm going to have to move towards the glowing light. <laughs> okay. How are you going to do that? Take a run at it. <laughs> <laughs> Still holding the turtle shell out, just in case. <laughs> That'll do. Yep. So you leap from the edge of the roof, clutching the turtle shell for some sort of protection. Mm -hmm. And it you feel that you 
I'm moving forwards and downwards, and then you stop in midair. The light coalesces in front of you into a female figure you don't recognize. She looks upon you and speaks simply. Judge not, lest ye be judged. Your companions do the bidding of the divine, bizarre though it may seem to you, and your aid will be valuable to them in all purposes. Be well. And she turns her back upon you, starts to move away. Uh, hang, hang, hang on, hang on. Um, who, who are you? That remains for you to be finding. Perhaps you'll need to ask the correct questions of the correct people. Everyone knows more than they tell. This appears to be one of these uh, wonderful cryptic religious experiences. I've read read about many of them in my uh, in my learnings. Um, in that case, I will simply drop to one knee and accept accept what she is saying. Okay, that's fine. Um, she moves moves away from you without acknowledging you further uh, and the light st starts to fade as she moves away from you the purple light swells and you wait in your bed right um just just to be on the safe side i'm gonna open the uh open the shuttles of the window Okay. It's just at the first hint of dawn. Mm, no more purple lightning outside? None at all. And if I open the door into the hallway? It's a hallway. And if I give Silic a good swift kick? <laughs> Am I allowed to... to react this time? You are absolutely <laughs> allowed to react this time. <laughs> oh. Did his head pops out. Oh, what's going on? Don't worry about it. It's fine. Oh, <laughs> just just, tri just tripped over you. Oh no, yeah, that's okay. I suppose I shouldn't have gone to sleep in the middle of the room. <laughs> he pops his arms and legs out and stumbles to his feet. Oh, well, I had a decent rest at least. Huh. How about you? Is it a good morning? Uh, it's certainly a morning. <laughs> oh. I'm sorry to hear that it was less than restful for you. Mm. Oh, well, let's see uh, about our companions, shall we? And uh, get some breakfast. Yeah, let's, let's, see, let's see how they slept. Yeah. Okay. Silic will lead the way out of the room. And, uh... Give a little knock on the door. Not too hard. Not like aggressive waking up kind of like, Hello? Anybody awake in there? Jack's gonna crack the door open and went, Morning. Oh, good morning, Jack. Good night. I think so. I've got all my toes. So yeah. Everyone <laughs> everyone slept okay? Yeah. Um oh. you okay, Gucci. Yes. Yep, all good. You're oh, alright. Hear it. Time for breakfast. I'd like me some bacon. Yeah. Yes, let's see what the uh, local delicacies are around here. I'll head downstairs mm. to the uh, innkeeper, I guess. Huh? Okay. Um. The barkeep bar is uh, is slowly starting to 
pull some things together for uh, for breakfast. It's a little bit earlier, perhaps, than he would have expected guests to be awake, but not too much so. Morning. You'll be wanting some breakfast. Yes, please. Please. Lovely. You got bacon? Aye, got a bit of bacon. Awesome. I have a wee message from uh, from my lady Fortun as well. Oh. oh. Says the fishers haven't returned from their trip overnight upstream. Can you go and take a look for them? Hmm. I'd normally expect to have them in for breakfast time. Oh. We'll have a check after we've had some grubbing. We'll, we'll, go, to, we'll go and have a look. No Hi. worries. You'll you'll understand if we've uh, if we've no uh, no herring for your breakfast meal. Oh, I, I don't, don't worry about the kedgeree. It's all good, man. Yes, well, uh, a bit porridge will suffice for me. I suppose we ought we ought not dawdle if there are potentially missing people. Indeed. Just put mine in a in a sandwich to go. Uh, barky, <laughs> but uh, don't, don't, I, I'll, I'll uh, just put a couple in a bag and I'll munch them on the way. It's all good. Very well. Time, actually. Okay. So going to gather your collective thoughts and sundry, sundry bits and bobs. Are you going to do anything before heading out? No, Not but I, I'm wondering if Arya has noticed yet that Malik's ire is um, conflicted. Distracted. Distracted, yeah. No, you'd confused. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think everybody, including Kuji, has noticed that he's behaving oddly relative to yesterday. <laughs> I'd like to think that Silic is so busy trying to keep his act up that he's not noticed. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's reasonable. Jack's gonna notice and be like, Ma "Mal, Mal, do you you wanna do you wanna make a roll? You look a bit peaky, man." Uh, yeah, yeah, that would be good. I'll I'll take a roll. I'll get a cup of strong tea, and I'm sure I'll be feeling much better. Oh, you're not feeling that great. Oh, just didn't didn't sleep well. Oh, do you uh, have a weird dream? Maybe. I get weird dreams all the time. I wouldn't worry about it too much. That's not surprising. But no, I'm sure I'm sure it'll be fine. Now I'm trying to wonder why it's not surprising that Jack gets I know, I know. Jack's just like, I don't know what you mean by that. But I'm just going to smile and nod. And just be like, okay. Um, is that because I'm a gnome and I could go in tunnels? But okay, but okay. Um, was it a bad dream? Or was it a good dream? Because there's two different types of weird dreams. I, th I think it was just a weird dream. Hmm. <laughs> well, we won't press you on it, but if you want to share anything about these dreams, or dream, my, my apology, well, feel free. I imagine that the three of us are kind of looking at each other like, do we bring up if there was a purple sky? 100%. Like, <laughs> should we bring this up just now? You two are. Jack's just having his, his, his mind is all in breakfast. <laughs> Fair enough. We'll give each other side eyes for a moment then, and <laughs> Link's gonna kind of look back. And be like, oh well, let's uh, let's get this breakfast sorted out and uh, get on our way, shall we? Yes. And we we can perhaps talk about these things on the way, maybe. Okay. Gather up lots of food. <laughs> Always good to have plenty of food. Uh, okay. 
Okay. So, we're going to head upstream. Um, and you don't really have a particularly good idea of how far upstream they might be, um, but reason suggests that um, if they're out overnight and they bring breakfast in, they're probably not that far away. So you can head out as soon as you like, unless there's anything else you want to do. I think we'll head straight out. Yep. Sounds good to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm thinking yeah, that. Just, just walk just, and just make the walk along the stream yeah. yep. and see what we come across. Okay, so you head down to the uh, down, down towards the edge of the river um, and then turn upstream. Um, you make perfectly good going. It's a nice, easy walk. Um, as you head up the stream, uh, you notice in the half-light uh, that amongst a small copse of trees a little way um, off to your left, you can see there looks like a tiny hut. Well, I guess the obvious thing is to go and see if anyone's there and ask if they... They've seen the fishers. Uh, if they, if they've seen mm. the fishers. Or if, indeed, if they are the fishers and they've not come back for some reason. Mm. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so let's see if there's anybody in there, shall we? Yeah, go and knock. Okay. Oh, well, it's the friendliest of us all, and, well, you've got away with <laughs> knocking on doors. After you, Jack. Okay. Just go walk up to the door. Bag on it three times, and you'd be like, "Hello!" The door Circle flies. representatives. The door flies open as you knock on it, oh. and a dishevelled figure, in what oh. used to be white robes, lurches out and starts screaming, "You! You with the red skin! You! You end us all! You must be destroyed!" Um, Faithful, what? help me destroy oh, this monster upon us. Uh, I'm at home. I I guess the best thing to do is probably is there a you know the equivalent of a sign of the cross that I can do for the circle? Like there is. Um, it's a concentric circle. Then I then I will kind of do that as. With as much flourish as I can muster uh, to show my allegiance, I guess. Demon! Demon among us! No, definitely not. I think this man's lost his mind and Slick comes running in to try and put himself between Jack and this ra raving madman. Can I just trip him up? <laughs> you can roll for initiative. <laughs> I would like to roll for initiative <laughs> and trip him up, to trip him up, because, <laughs> um, what am I rolling? Is it d20? D20, uh, d20 plus your initiative modifier. Oh yeah, I'm looking at the wrong bit of the, of the dice, there we think. Uh, that is a uh, 19. <laughs> okay, and for the rest of you? Twenty-one. Uh, Twenty-one. <laughs> and I have to use dice bot because I've misplaced my dice and I can't oh. find them. Oh no! Uh, I'm sure they will turn up at a time when I can actually look properly. Um, but let me get that sorted out. Oh god, the dice. Things have all changed. I can't remember the bloody inputs. <laughs> dot, it's dot D20 plus whatever you're doing. Where is it? It's unusual is for me to have to go to a third round of tie breaks on an initiative, but never mind. 
I need to fix the dice channel. Nope, to... it's not doing anything. <laughs> um, you, if you just take, this is going to sound really daft, if you just take dice roller into an empty Google search, yeah. it'll come up with a dice roller. That is what I am using, as my setup is not conductive to rolling dice. I'm using my phone. <laughs> <laughs> my computer is not conducive to anything except Discord. I got a 13. A 13 for Silic. There we go. Well, the good news is, uh, Jack, that you can indeed trip him up. Huzzah. Um, he will sprawl to the ground in front of you. Uh, Silic, you are able to get in between Jack and the uh, and the unknown figure. Um, Screaming in someone's face is rude. He's going to start to pick himself up, and um, and as as he does stand up, uh, he's going to start casting a spell. Stop right there! And Silic tries to push him again, hard in the chest, just to take him off his feet and stop this process. Okay. Um. He flashes a mirror at you, um, and your attempt to push him just kind of meets no fruitful outcome. But does my hand bounce off? Or yes, it, it sort of bounces off. It's somewhere between bouncing off and just sliding sideways from him. You feel Ross, that almost... you feel that you would have to be a lot more thoughtful about how to uh, how to attack him. Can I cast a light cantrip, like right in front of his face, to dazzle him? You absolutely can. Yes. Okay. Sorry. Well, plus. Yeah. That's yep. fine. Um, he does stagger a little bit. He doesn't appear to be too badly dazzled, but it's going to have yeah. some some effect. Uh, Malik, sire. I mean, I don't necessarily want to murder the guy just for being kind of a shy guy, but I could slap him with a with a good old fashioned blindness deafness. So let's go for blindness in that case. Uh, I will. Yeah, um, I think I'll try and blind him uh, with divine power. Joy of joys. Okay. Uh, da -da -da, and my roll for that. Let me see. Spell attack bonus plus six. So uh, that will be a roll of 22. Yep. Absolutely hits. Sorry, was that blindness or deafness you were inflicting? Uh, blindness. Okay. He is He is therefore blind. Hey, that certainly helps. I'll maybe shout after him that we're not we're not wanting to hurt him. As you make him blind, yeah, he's he's just continuing really to scream help. about the uh, about the red skinned demon who is going to bring the end of the end to all uh, of the true believers of Armand. Uh, Jack, being mean. Um, just gonna try and move forward and draw a dagger and just like. He's not on the ground. He's still standing, isn't he? Yes. Um, and my cat is attacking the window. <laughs> not right now. Um. Because hmm. if Silic was pushed back by the, there must be like a shield or something. So it's Jack's a bit hesitant to go too far forward. Mm-hmm. Um. 
Is there a way that he can sneak past him to get behind him? I mean, he's blind. What's he going to do? Sorry, guys. Uh, two seconds. Right? Yeah, sorry. that's fine. Um, yeah, I'm just going to try and sneak past him to get behind him in a better position then. Um, okay. Make me a stealth check. Because he can hear you, he just can't see you. That's a 17. Okay. Yep, that's fine. You managed to gonna... work your way around behind him, no problem. I'm going to go and get my cat in now. <laughs> right, that's fair. Silic. Okay. Um, hmm. I should know my character better, but is Divine Sense something that I could do as an extra thing on top of like a physical action? Or would I need to dedicate a turn to that? Um, That's a good question. Half a sec. I think it might be a bonus action, but we'll check. Uh, no, it's an, it's an action, so it would be your main thing this turn. Okay, I think that's probably a little bit much, <laughs> given circumstances. Um, can I see into the hut? The, like, this guy came through a door. Can I see behind him to what's in there? Um, you can. It looks like there's a bunch of little bits of uh, of very, very mangled old furniture that has been thrown together to approximate a bed. And nothing much else? You can't see anything much else through the doorway. Okay, that's interesting because he kind of called out to seemingly other people to attack us. Um, looking around, generally taking in space around us. Is there anywhere bushes, things that people could jump out from? Is there any indication of anything like that happening? Um, there isn't. Um, and with a little bit of consideration um, the most likely thing is that he was shouting for you to help the rest of you. Because the default of course is that everybody is a true believer of Armand. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you must be unaware of the nature of this demon among you. And when enlightened to its presence, you should clearly help the faithful. Okay. Uh, seeing nobody around then and confused, he kind of steps forward and tries to, again, with the guy confused, like lay a hand on him. But not necessarily push him with force this time, just lay a hand on his shoulder to try and reach out to him and shake him out of this a little bit. Show some kindness in the middle of this maelstrom, I guess. Um, okay. You can successfully lay a hand on his shoulder. Um, but in doing so, he will react violently. Uh, and he tries to sw swipe at you with the mace that's been dangling from his other hand. Um, despite being blind, he manages to spin, guided by your hand, and strike you with his mace. Yeah. Getting clonked. A little bit clunked, um, but only to on, only for uh, only for a little bit of superficial damage. His aim is accurate, but his gauge of exactly where you are is not necessarily on point for doing a proper hit. But it's clear that he isn't going to respond to reason. Okay, am I taking hit points? Not on that one. Okay. So, <laughs> dazed slightly, we'll go back. Oh, this bad man can't be reasoned with. We should try and subdue him. 
Does anyone have rope? I'm pretty sure we've all got rope. <laughs> I don't have rope. Um, I, I have rope. He shouts a few words, and you can see his vision clear as he he looks to see where you all are. Can we? What language are the words then? They're just a standard spell. Okay. Okay. We'll need to tie him up and gag him then, so he can't do the verbal component. Mm. Okay, so what are you going to attempt to do in this combat round with him? Get him to you're grind. Up, you're up first, Aria. I suppose I want to, I'm not the be necessarily the best person to do this, but grapple so that someone else can tie him up on their turn. Okay. You can make me a grapple check then. Which, uh, is, which a is a strength check. A strength check plus your, uh, plus your proficiency bonus. Fifteen. Okay, you do manage to grapple him successfully. Uh, Malik, sire. Hmm. I mean, I do have rope in my bag, but I'd probably have to go digging for it. So... Mm -hmm. hmm. Would there be any benefit to me also trying to make a grapple check? Would that make it harder for him to break out, or...? Um, you might be able to uh, to grapple him in between the two of you, but it would make it very difficult for anybody else to do anything. Yeah. Uh, okay, then in that case I'm going to... Is it an action to go digging through your bag? <laughs> if you need to dig through your bag for it, it'll take you your full, uh, your full action. Right, then I guess that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm going to get the... I've got a 50 foot of silk rope. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'll dig that out, get it ready. Uh, in the meantime, I'll... You know, sort of say to him, like... Maybe maybe you should just calm down, big man. All right, you're, you're literally speaking to the true faithful of Armand. Like, I don't know who you're trying to impress with all of this nonsense, but none of us are, none of us are enjoying it. Okay. Jack, what would you like to do? Jack is probably just going to try and unbalance him as much as he can from, and maybe just like kick his the back of his knee. Just try and like get his knee out so Arya can, and just, just like jump in and out. Um, so I'm not sure. Okay. That, be... that would be an, that would be an unarmed Strike. Arm strike. Um, okay. Oh no. Oh, 23. Ooh, natural 20. That's, that's quite a uh, quite a good strike. Um you will certainly damage his knee. The question is, are you going to choose to use your sneak attack bonus? Um, I don't think I. I don't think I really <laughs> need to. <laughs> so no. Okay. <laughs> I don't think I will. Parting his knee is enough. That was that was quite mean. Um, yeah. He will he will cry out in pain because because uh, you because you critically kicked his knee. <laughs> he screamed in my face. He's screaming in your ear now. Yep. <laughs> Although arguably above your ear because you're only little. I am only little. <laughs> okay. Silic. Okay. Um, silic has got his rope tied to his waist alongside most of the rest of his equipment. Um, so he just pulls his bit off. And um, start. He gets down on his hands and knees and starts wrapping the guy's ankles up. Okay. Uh, can you make me a dexterity check? You dog. That is 
a nine. Okay. Um, he is flailing with his now damaged leg. And he hoofs you point blank in the jaw. So you will incur three points for damage on this occasion. Oh. And you have not yet restrained his uh, his legs sufficiently. Recoil, holding his kind of beak, chin thing. Uh, Arya, can you give me a strength check, please? Okay. He's trying to break free. He's a wriggly 14. one. 14, was that? 15. 15, that's fine. I can't add. He's struggling, but he can't yet free himself. Um, and I think there's only one thing he can do here. Yep, there is exactly one thing he can do here. Um, he cries for our mund and points a finger at Malaxire. A, a bolt of flame descends upon you. Can you give me a dexterity save? Give me a second. 16. That's fine. You manage to evade it. Yep chars the grass at your feet. Ah. Mm, right. In that case, there. no. But back oh. round to Aria. Mm -hmm. If you want to maintain your grapple, you can do so without needing to roll this turn. He's still struggling quite a lot, so it's probably better for me to keep hold of him. Okay. Let everyone else work, I think. It certainly limits quite how much he can do. Yeah. Um, I'll probably keep hold of him and try and scream in his ear that Armand preaches tolerance. Okay. Does it appear to have any great effect? Cannot reason with crazy people. No. Indeed you or can. Reason. Or cats. I don't know. You can reason with cat. Not this one. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Some cats can reason with. <laughs> Most cats. Uh, okay. If I could lose her as a desk, I would. <laughs> Malak Sire then? Yes, uh, in that case, if I now have my rope in hand, I'm going to attempt to tie him up. Okay, what are you going to attempt to tie? Uh, I am going to attempt to tie his... Probably attempt to bind his feet. I think that would be the quickest way to make sure that he was at least stuck in place. Okay, so you're going to join Silic on the ground in front of him? Yeah. Okay, make me a dexterity check. Okay. Thirteen. Okay. You just about get away with dodging his uh, flying feet. Um, and you can start to uh, make a loop around one ankle. It's not a lot of time to start applying rope. No. Jack. Um, he's just uh, um, Jack is going to take off his boot and take off his sock and then stuff it in his mouth <laughs> <laughs> okay can you make me a dexterity check yep <laughs> 
23. Wow. <laughs> Feeling lucky tonight. <laughs> Dicebot likes me today. This app likes me today. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Apparently my dice like you today as well. Gosh. Um, you manage to get the sock perfectly in place. Uh, but as you push, as you force it into his mouth, he flails at the wrong moment, and your f uh, your fist breaks some of his teeth off, and he starts to convulse. <laughs> oh, can I pull it back out so he doesn't choke? You can, absolutely fine. <laughs> but make sure he doesn't choke first, and then just stick it back in. <laughs> I'm sorry. If it, if you stop moving, then it wouldn't hurt so much. So, Silic, you you are sat you are sat on the ground in front of someone who is convulsing, having just had his teeth punched down his throat, um, and there is a bit of rope around the other ankle. What are you going to do? Got the vision of the entire squad <laughs> just scrambling around this guy right now. I will be this incompetent, <laughs> really. <laughs> all I cannot subdue and tie up a single person. This is what happens when we're not allowed to murder people indiscriminately. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um. <laughs> hmm. gonna grab the guy's foot and pull it out underneath him to try and just bring this whole thing toppling to the ground. <laughs> The foot with the rope, or the foot without the rope? The one without the rope. He's leaving that one with Malik's side, because it might help, leverage-wise, have somebody to pull the other foot. It's okay. not that that's happening, necessarily, at the same time. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> so, Silic, make me a dexterity check. Ari Ah, make me a strength check. I got a natural one. <laughs> oh no! Okay. Natural twenty. <laughs> <laughs> the okay. seesaw action. <laughs> so, Silic, you yank on his foot. Um, he shrieks in pain because that's the knee that Jack kicked into uh, in, into pieces earlier. Um, and he topples towards you. You fail completely to move. And oh. he and Aria land very firmly on top of you. Uh, so, Silic, uh, you need to bleed, probably. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, you take 11 crushing damage. Um... Are we ah? You take one damage um, from landing on somebody who is mostly bone. By yeah. which I mean by which I mean the crazy guy, not Silic. Um, and he takes an inordinate amount of damage because some enterprising person has just put an entire person's body weight onto a skinny guy who is meeting a very hard surface. All that any of you can hear is a sound of ribs splintering oh. and a gurgle. Oh no, did we just murder him? And this is happening on top of Silic right now. Yep. Oh. Your shell, your shell is the pivot point upon which his ribs have splintered, I'm afraid. <laughs> Back or front of the shell? Well, he was on the ground, so front, it'll be... So it'll be the front. It'll, it'll be the part immediately behind his head. Oh, okay. Yeah, fair. So I'm afraid that although you have safely, uh, safely neutralised the threat... You have extremely thoroughly neutralized the threat. Is he is he dead? He is very dead. <laughs> oh dear. Oh. 
You have so I was going to say, I, I, I in theory could run in with a spare the dying. No. Uh, you, Just, uh, you, you've put, you've put all of his ribs through his lungs. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> Just Jack's Apparently. Just like... Apparently, all of us need to refresh our own how to subdue people. Oh. We did do this in training, remember? Oh, oh. I was just trying to trip him up. I just thought that maybe if we could get him on the ground, that we no, could finally get him tied up. Them. You hold them, you tie up the bit that's held, then it's easier to tie up the rest. <clears throat> Jack's just like watching this body like fall to the floor. <laughs> He's like, oh, oh, that wasn't a good job. Oh, oh dear. I might be a bit sick. Um, I always was a bit heavy handed in school. I'm, I'm so sorry. You might um, want to wash your sock, Jack. I don't think I want my sock back. You only <laughs> took your sock fair. back. <laughs> did I take my sock back? You did. You pulled it back out of his mouth oh. when you pushed his, punched his teeth in. But I was going to, I pushed it back in as well <laughs> yeah. to keep him gagged. I just didn't want him to choke. Oh dear, what a mess. It's a good job I've got a spare sock. <laughs> in my bag. Okay. Well, having gotten the corpse off of him, I guess <laughs> looking around the room is... I mean, he only saw the bed. There were a couple of angles that I guess you wouldn't have been able to see from the door. Is there any indication, like, he's just thinking uh, to salvage the moment. Any sign of the fin fisherman at all? There's, <laughs> absolutely, anything, just... there's absolutely no sign of the, of the fishers at all. Uh, the only thing you do see is a very ornate uh, wooden box. It's brightly coloured and it looks completely out of keeping. Oh, well, what's this? And how big are we talking? Is it like a jewelry box? Is it a chest? Yeah. Is it? No, it's a it's a small box. It's perhaps uh, perhaps a foot or so at most. Um, it, certainly easily liftable. And any carvings, markings, anything on it? It's very, uh, very delicately illustrated. It's, um, it's got uh, floral motifs on it, um, and a little bit of the, um, of the Armand concentric circle patterning around the corners. Oh, feels bad because this signs that this man was a true believer of some sort. Is that um, a relic? Well, it's a relic of this man's life, perhaps. And Silic opens the box to have a look and see what's inside. Okay. It's, it contains only a silk-wrapped bundle. Mm -mm. You might want to be careful unwrapping that. <laughs> Maybe we um, don't unwrap it and just leave it in the box. Well, I think now that we're out of combat, this is an opportunity for me to use Divine Sense and see if there's anything going on with this uh, particular item. Um, you can sense that the box is consecrated, but the contents are not. Mm. Does that mean that there's anything dodgy about the contents or is it just that the box is consecrated um it's an absence of consecration on the contents so you don't there's, there's no yeah you can't draw a conclusion from that particularly it's probably not an actual relic but beyond that you've no idea oh, it's gonna be a woodcut of this guy and his happy family isn't it <laughs> like just a really the break, break the heart. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so he, turning to the group, he ex explains, Oh, well, the box itself is consecrated, I suppose, maybe to protect the contents, but I can feel nothing from the contents themselves. And he pulls out the wrap and starts undoing it to see what we've got. Okay. Jack's going to take a few steps away. He <laughs> does not trust it. <laughs> like, nope. Nope. 
so. Is anyone terrible, else terrible going to do anything before <clears throat> Selick uh, unwraps the bundle to see what's in it? Nope. No. Okay. Uh, inside the bundle is a pair of delicate silk shoes of visibly superb quality. There's absolutely no reason they would be useful in any way out in the out in these conditions. Nor nor indeed inside the hut. Are they adult shoes or kids' shoes? Um, they look like they're adult shoes. They'd be a little bit big for you, I suspect, Jack, but you might get away with it. I'm with purple mm -hmm. ones. Who's then silly so cool? Pull the pair of shoes out and present them to everybody. Goes, well, it's just a pair of shoes. I, I, I don't know if this has got anything to do with this man's raving and ranting. They're really pretty shoes. Like, that's expensive. Well, that's they're why they're yours. in the box. They're, they're all yours if you want them, I suppose. I, mean, I guess they're not his anymore. But then... Oh, because you murdered him. Oh, yes. I <laughs> did. No, no, <laughs> no. Like, 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 at I mean, I, no, I mean, can I, I, can I just say, Jack, we all murdered them. I did. Yeah. I, me and Arya did it. Punched his teeth out and then kicked him in the knee. I was trying to silence him. I did see you that help. That doesn't him. make it sound any better. <laughs> silence did not mean death. <laughs> but it can. <laughs> but it did. <laughs> I mean. I was going to say we were all incompetent, but at least I managed to pin him so you could try and tie him up. Yeah, you did. We, I at least we got all, him on the did floor. We did a good job of murdering that man. <laughs> we can agree I, on that. I, arguably, yeah. part, of the problem, uh, part of the problem for you, Aria, is that you were too competent. You didn't let go of him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if I was already restraining him, all he needed to do was tie ropes around his limbs. Yep. It's not I, that I, I managed one of them. You <laughs> need to join them to the other one, though. <laughs> That's how it works. I'd never be the chance. <laughs> Jack's going to try and start pottering about the place and having to look through drawers and stuff. There, there, there is nothing. There's no. There's, nothing. there's virtually no furniture. There is a makeshift bed and the only other thing in the hut. Um, was the uh, was the box that Silic picked up? So there's nothing on the walls or anything to like give us an idea of who this man is, or no, it's the, it's the the epitome of a hermit. Okay, mad hermit it is. Mm -hmm. The um... local crazy man. <laughs> that was, you know that was well timed. That was really well timed for a horror show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I need door slam shut. <laughs> so apparently you're all leaving the hut because <laughs> um, the sound effect is yep. I, I think yeah. Silic would remark oh. and be like, I, "I would be remiss to leave this man without a proper burial, at yeah, the very least." Let's... We'll put um, it this way: if we don't bury him. We need to report the fact that we accidentally killed him and I mean, potentially should, bid on for manslaughter. We should uh, still report the fact even if we do bury him. But, you know, I think that we should at least at least give him a proper send-off. Well, we do. <laughs> looking down at the body... <laughs> slightly... Yeah, looking down at the body... Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, look, so, yeah, looking at the body, Silic... Looks is that mirror that he was holding anywhere in sight? Um, yes. So he bends down and picks it up. And says, "I'd almost forgotten about this thing." And mm -hmm. he looks it over. Is is there anything special about it? Just by visuals? Nothing at all. It's just a little hand mirror. Okay. He taps on the front of the mirror to see if there's any sense of that barrier feeling. Mm-hmm. Uh, there isn't. Um, but what 
um, what you can pick out um, is that there is a little bit of not not really uh, not really arcane residue, but it's clearly been used as a component in a spell uh, reasonably recently. Okay. Hmm, seems that he channeled one of his spells through this, perhaps. I mean, he did flash it out and put that barrier up to stop me. A man of some skill. Surely he'd be known in the local area. Possibly, but... I'm... Is there a tradition in Verlastin for followers of Armand to be hermit? Um, not particularly strongly. Okay. Um, it's you know it, it it's somewhat unusual for someone to go off and do their own thing. Okay. So um, he's extra weird. Yeah, he he is he is extra weird. He, it's likely that uh, that people in Riverford will know of him. But whether they've ever even met him, never mind had any sort of real interaction with him, is very questionable. Well, this is good and bad. Good, because it's less likely someone will notice that he's disappeared. Um, or inquire too heavily um, about his disappearance. Uh, but also, we're not going to be able to get much more information about him. No. So, at least he's not going to be worrying about demons anymore, I guess. Is it peace? Yes, he's with Armand now. Of course. Hopefully. Don't know. Well, Does Armand suppose... forgive the crimes of the crazy? <laughs> um. You know. Well, let's... Let's prepare a, uh, a burial site for him, and then uh, I suppose we'll continue on to try and find these fishermen. Of course, this wasn't the reason we were out here in the first place. No, indeed. This has <laughs> taken idea. some time. Let's uh, get on with the task at hand, then. Okay. So, I shall start digging. Likewise. Okay. I shall clean up the body. <laughs> Try and... Uh, and, and I'm pretty sure I'll know the funeral rites, so I will begin getting those ready. Yep. That seems reasonable to me. Um, you'll be able to do... You'd be able to do those. Silit would be able to do those, although may feel it inappropriate in the circumstances. <laughs> I, I think he'd shy away from uh, that particular role, given... Yeah, chain of events. So it's <laughs> so it's going to be given by the person that this guy called the demon. Yep. Well, that is definitely there's better. There's a certain amount of <laughs> like, oh. justice in that. Yes. Oh, that's, that's so. It's what, you know what? That's his, that's his problem. Don't worry about it. Just, just to confirm, Silic, are you keeping hold of the shoes for the moment? Um, if anybody wanted to take them off of me. Like they're 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 not silic style necessarily. I don't think they're gonna fit his feet. He doesn't really wear clothes at all. I mean, we're all kind of tramping around in like giant military issue boots. So yeah. they're they're not really adventuring gear. Yeah. No, but they look, you know. It looks like they were kept for a purpose. Yeah. And they're in a consecrated box, so. I, I guess Silic will keep hold of it for now then and uh, wrap it up and put it somewhere about his person. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. That seems... Just so I know where they are. Okay. So you're going to dig a big hole, bury him in it, observe the appropriate rites. Which don't take very long. It's a very practical matter. Um, and then cover, him, cover it all up and pretend it never happened. <laughs> Literally. Yep. 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 But what, 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 what hurt? What, what hurt? What hurt? 
Well, the hut's still there, at least for the moment, unless you have any ideas about that, Jack. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's a nice, it's a nice hut. Um, nice location. Um, no, no ideas, not at all. <laughs> no longer has a resident that you can suggest it would be a shame if something were to happen to the hut. <laughs> Makes threatening it a bit harder. I don't want to throw it, I kind of want to have it. <laughs> it's a nice sign. <laughs> no, we're not, we are not murder, well, committing manslaughter and then stealing his home. I'm just saying, it, it should be noted that it's now empty and someone could live here. I mean, we did steal his shoes. I mean, exactly. Well, <laughs> that's okay. enough. We are going to <laughs> now. He is buried. We are going to find the fisherman. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. And then Absolutely. we will go back to town mm -hmm. and to tell them of our day. And then we will continue on our loop. And we are and not taking a hut with us. Oh no! I don't, I'm not saying that we're taking the hut. I'm just saying we report the hut. Mm-hmm. Along That's what with I'm everything saying. else, let's get moving. Yes, Bob. Yes, let's go. Something worse happens. Okay. Although, as we start moving, I would quite... Arya's going to walk beside Malik's Iron Bay. So, your funny dream did not include um, strange hermits thinking you were a demon then, did they? Uh, no. No, that was... Fortunately, not part of it. Good. It's, um, that was quite unsettling enough. All of it yeah. was unsettling. The sound. Oh, don't remind me. Mm. Mm. Okay. So another half hour or so further upstream uh, you find the group of fishers sat on the riverbank mending their nets they look up as you approach acknowledge you and carry on working um aren't these the fishermen we're supposed to be looking for let's hope so we can ask <laughs> After the day we've had, we've got to hope for some luck. Hello! Just gonna wave. Hello oh, there. Um. You're not having to be the fisherman from Riverford, right? That's us. No ah. fish. Big holes oh. in our nets. We're fixing oh, no. that. We'll get a load. We'll get a load caught tonight with Grace. And we'll uh, we'll see what we can do for breakfast in the morning once we're back. Fair enough. Oh, what happened to the nets, though? We're not rightly sure. You see, it's not the done thing to be uh, to to have too much of an eye on things overnight, as you'll be aware around here. Hi. Yeah. It's less of a problem than that's uh, that up here than in uh, down in Greydale but we still tr try to keep ourselves to ourselves in the darkest hours and well we set the nets out we turn in under uh, under canvas for a couple of hours and then we pop back out to collect our to collect our load for the day and that's all there is to it but last night Something really big must have come down here, because these holes are looking better now, but it's almost half the width of the river. There's the hole in this net. Oh, wow. I wonder what that could have been. And you didn't hear anything? Nothing at all. Nobody, uh, no. None, none of us seemed to, uh, seemed to have picked anything up when... Uh, while we were asleep. How interesting. Well, we've not come across anything 
massive in the river, so I can't see that it's going to happen again, thankfully. Well, it can only have gone one, you know, if it was in the river, it's only gone one or, uh, other direction. Aye. If it wasn't in the river, why is it tearing the nets up? Makes no sense at all. Hmm. All we can do is get these patched up and get them back out in time to try and try and pick up some uh, some fish tonight instead. Fair. Perhaps we'll go a little further upriver, have a look and see if we can see if we can see anything that might have caused it. I doubt there will be, but it's probably better to check than not. Yeah. Ah, that's, that, that seems reasonable. Um, and maybe if if not, perhaps you'd uh, you look you, you look like hardy folk. Perhaps you'd be so kind as to uh, as to stay around and perhaps keep an eye on things. You are clearly not immediately local, so uh, our, we're on our look at the moment. Yeah, so. you have the look of it. <laughs> Uh, but our, our local customs won't necessarily constrain you the way they do us. This is true, yeah. Yes, I, we'd be, I think we'd be glad to camp out for the night if that's what you're suggesting, to keep an eye on these nets and see if something else might try to rip through them. Aye, that would be, that would be a kindness. And perhaps save tomorrow's breakfast for the villagers. <laughs> Oh, well, do you, do you know of any good camping ground nearby then? Well, you should be able to set up pretty much anywhere on the riverbank. But if you're going to, uh, if you're going to sit out and watch for anything large, then you'd probably want to be right here by us. I suppose you're right. And uh, looking around um, with Silex survival skills, can he kind of take note of any particularly good spots for us to uh, get set up and? maybe even get that started um there's plenty of stroke for you to set out some bedrolls there's no no issue there at all um it's perfectly good terrain it's slightly sloped so you wouldn't have an issue with drainage and there's really nothing to make you even think you need to spend any real amount of time on it you can pretty much just throw your bedrolls down and have done uh, you don't even have to build a fire because the fishers already have one going. Mm -hmm. oh, perfect. Ah, just a minute. <clears throat> Which means that you'll be able to head upstream a wee bit and uh, head back down again in plenty of time to uh, get settled down with a bit, a bit of dinner from your ration packs and see how uh, see how overnight goes. Mm -hmm. oh, we'll do just that then. Yeah, sounds like a plan. That's all good. Okay. So, are you going to leave anything here, or are you just going to carry everything with you? I think we can probably leave our bedrolls here. Mm. Yeah. 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 With that all set up, ready. Okay. Like weapons, shield, and the rest of the kit with us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that seems fair. Yeah, I don't think we need to take much. Okay, so... A little way upstream you go. How far do you want to go? You've probably got three or four hours before you need to be settled in for the overnight watch. Probably no more than a mile or two, really. Mm. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's pretty easy going still. It starts to get a little bit more rugged as you uh, as you progress. Um, if you went perhaps another five miles, you you can see you'd be into uh, in, into some foothills. Um, but there's not a great deal to be seen. It's pretty good. Uh, it looks like a pretty decent river. You can see fish. Uh, hither and yon in it um, and on the far side it looks like perfectly good rowing country nothing really too remarkable about it at all uh, 
Um, I would say they would maybe keep an eye out for obvious signs that anything large and uh, yeah, anything large had been on its way through, like um, disruptions on the banks of the river and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, that show that maybe something something large has entered or exited the river. Okay. Um, yeah, you, there's no nothing at all that would indicate something had moved in or out of the river. Um, it, and, you know, it doesn't look like, for example, something has surged in one direction or the other and caused a tidal wave onto the banks. Um, if something has come through here, it's done so at a, at a perfectly sedate pace. <laughs> there any signs or any feeling of there being one of the rips in the veil? Um, you haven't seen any of the telltale uh, lights that would suggest it. And there's nothing else that is different from this world in the river that we can see? You can't see anything different. Okay. And Arya is just about is opens her mouth to say this and then goes, Oh, um Ah um It looks like the river is as it should be. Look at Jack and Silic like Do yeah. I say? <laughs> Yeah, so no no signs of anything untoward. Nothing yeah, anyway. Nothing unusual yet. Mm. You would expect to see it on this side. Hmm. Well they did the fishermen did say something about night time. They, they that was their suspicion, was that, that something was happening overnight. So it could well be that we just have to wait this out. Oh. Do we set Not up a trap? Time. We might need something stronger than the net. Well, I'm not sure what we could arrange in the meantime. Mm. Uh, Malixar, you said you didn't sleep particularly well. Did you hear any strange noises or anything overnight? Um, no, just just strange dreams. Kept me tossing and turning throughout the night. Nothing too unusual. Okay. Carries on perfectly happily, assuming that if it had been anything like our strange nighttime experiences, he would have said something. <laughs> mm. Okay. Is there anything else you want to look at, at the, around here while you're upstream of the fishers? I think feeling like there's probably no signs of anything evidence-wise of what's gone on. Uh, Silic's going to put his mind to looking for things to forage and to add to what will hopefully be a fish dinner, is what he's uh, looking forward to when we get back to camp. Okay. That's fine. You can find a few odd bits and pieces that will augment it quite nicely. Looks like quite a good way to pass the time. Um, Next how long did it take us to reach the fishers? From the hut or from Riverford? From Riverford. Um, it probably took uh, about five hours, although part of that was engaged in conducting a funeral. Okay. Um, so you're probably about four hours back from the fishers. Right, okay. Just it was just wondering whether we should let it... sorry if we should let the villagers know that the fishers are that their people are fine, mm -hmm. but it would be quite tight for time then. Yeah, do we have any other methods of sending a message? Not really. No. Could we ask one of them to go back? Hmm. We could. 
you could. Um, a, sin- a single person travelling alone is un- would be unusual when they normally mm. travelled in groups. So yeah. they might not. They be... did say they they did say that they would be heading back with a catch. Hopefully this evening. Did they not? No, oh, in the morning. Yeah, at the, the time they usually would. Um, I don't know how aware you are of this area, Malik Sire, um, but most villagers in this region believe that being outside or awake overnight is dangerous. Um, um, why, why, why would that be? It seems to vary. Um, down in Greydale, they talk about uh, the place having that there being a lot of memories in the place and that the memories are stronger at night. Um, We've certainly had some unexpected nighttime occurrences. Um, But even when the the round circle, when the roundhouse went up, nobody from Greydale, none of the locals risked coming outside or looking out the window. It is it is considered it is just too dangerous for people to do so. The fishers must be hardy folk because very few others would be out doing night fishing round here. Mm, yeah. Goodness. In Greydale we were locked into our rooms overnight. Mm. Yeah, it was a bit weird. It was a bit like being back at home again and mum telling you when to go to bed. I mean, we could all get in and out the window, so it was fine, but... Yes, well, I'm sure we all had our experiences skipping curfew back in school. Oh, yeah. Tunneling was great. Oh, dear. Okay. So what are you going to do? I mean, I think if... Oh, sorry, after you. I was just going to say, I think if there's nothing pointing us any other direction, then yeah, we can head back and get ourselves set up for camping. Yep. Agreed. Okay. That's fine. So, you you only went um, a little way upstream. Um, mm. No more than a mile or two, so you get back in perfectly good order. Um, there's no issue at all with getting some dinner sorted out. Um, your additions to that are looking very welcome. Um, and they're more than happy to share the fish that they did catch last night with you. Um, and that's pretty much all there is until, uh, un- until night starts to fall. Um... They sit up and poke the fire a little bit until it's really until it's very definitely actually dark, um, and then they all make uh, make muttered excuses and duck under their uh, canvas awnings. Um, and you can you can hear hear them just rustling. And then get and clearly getting set up to sleep for a couple of hours. Well, I, well, I suppose we should fi- figure out an order of the watch. Yeah, that might be good. Um, I can I can take first watch. That's probably wise. It means you'll get an unbroken sleep later on. Yeah, that would be good. I'll take second. I'll take third. And I will take last watch. Okay. That's all fine. So, you settle in, those of you who are settling in. (coughs) Uh, Malik, so how and where are you going to cheat watch? Um, well, is there any 
like slightly raised areas that overlook the uh, the actual river itself. Uh, only really the banks that you're on. Yeah, then I guess I'll just stay on the bank. Okay. Uh, make sure that I'm within shouting distance of camp. Fair enough. Are you upstream or downstream of camp? Uh, slightly upstream of camp. Okay. Um, for the most part, your watch passes peacefully. There are some regular nighttime animal noises. Uh, nothing particularly concerning. Um, you occasionally hear the odd, very quiet uh, noise from the river, which, you know, fi fish surfacing, other wildlife using the river. Um, nothing particularly interesting. Um, you find that the time passes reasonably well, um, and perhaps faster than you expected. It seems to be a uh, time to go and rouse Jack for his watch. Yeah, um, gives me plenty of time to kind of mull over what I'd uh, dreamed about last night and then what I might be dreaming about tonight. Uh, but yeah, that sounds good. I will go and uh, wake Jack. Okay. Oh, well, um, hi. Um, you're good? Yeah, nothing too exciting. Okay, dokie. Jack. Enjoy. As Malaxai awaits you and you sit up, behind him on the river, you see a purple tinge. Ooh, what's that? Behind you, what's that? Mm. Uh, turn you around. <laughs> yeah. Turn you around. Hey, that. <laughs> Malaxire's face visibly drops. <laughs> mm. What's wrong? You look like you see a ghost. Something like that. Right. Um. I'm gonna wake. I'm gonna wake Ari. 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 There's a purple thing. <gasps> There's a purple thing. Oh, another night of purple skies. Yeah. No, purple water purple, this time. <laughs> purple skies? Oh, I'd... yeah. Um. Let's leave Selic sleeping a little longer. When the. If the full sky goes purple, then we'll wake him. Okay. Um, this is... It's gonna be fun. I think. We have encountered many unusual things under the purple skies at night. Pretty sure this is where all the rumours and superstition about night time came from in this region. When you when you say strange, are we talking portents and omens? Strange or we're talking other beings? It's not. It's it's not been threatening. It's not been dangerous. But it's very. It's completely unlike anything any of us have heard of before. Hmm. There's... We hear strange things. Yeah. Well, it does seem awfully familiar compared to what I dreamed of last night, shall we say. So I'm a little... on edge. Aria just stares at you hard and goes, Were you told anything in that dream? And what if I was? Like, pay surely... Listen to the words and pay attention. You expect me to believe that 
false prophets come out of purple skies and let us know exactly what Armand's will is without his intervention. Who said anything about prophets or Armand? Hmm. Yeah, we don't know. We don't know what it is. Well, from from what we know of everything, it pretty much has to be Armand, surely, right? Some things have led to questions around that. We're just here doing our loop. We're However, just... they do talk of Armand. He is real. He is the god mm. of the world. But it looks as though some things might have been simplified a little bit. Mm. You okay, Mal? Yeah. I've, you know, being raised as part of the temple, you you are always told the simpler version before you're told the more complicated version, right? It could be that. Could be. Let's hope it's that. <coughs> I'm just willing to wait and see how this pans out. Yep. Those of yeah. you who are facing the river and see that the purple tinge has deepened it's only in the water and a large white shape is moving slowly upstream oh what's that um yeah i mean no uh, oh i was gonna say i'll i'll move closer to the river bank in order to get a better look um Alright, what we... Jack, go have a look. I'm going to dig out opener. Okay. Favor me, dig. Mal! I'm coming! I'm only wee legs! Kuji has woken. Ooh. And is watching. Clearly, the sight of such a... such a large white creature is... Not unfamiliar to her, but we know that from previous experience. Select, so you may at your choice be disturbed by the goings on. Uh, <clears throat> uh, yeah, I, I think uh, it'd be fair to say that maybe the hubbub around and the quick movement away from camp, something has stirred within him instinct wise, and he's popped up. Oh, what's going on? And seeing the purple stuff and the others running off, he leaves Arya to uh, deal with Baloth's opener and, yeah, goes down to the riverbank with the others. Okay. So, who's doing what then? Trying to get a good look at this, uh, well, if I spotted this as I've ran down towards it whatever this big white mass is it's difficult to get di di shape yeah it's difficult form. to miss a yeah, a big white creature in a purple in a purple river is it like a whale or a it's a it's a really 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 big fish <sighs> um it's it it's like you fed one of the standard river fish all the food in the world, and it just grew and grew and grew. That's a big fish. <laughs> that was Very big fish. Juji just looks at it and goes, Dinner for weeks. <laughs> oh, I love Kuji. <laughs> You're saying that thing's good to eat? I mean, it's a big, it could feed loads for ages. What? Is it, <clears throat> is it the same sort of colours and patterns as the fish that we saw that had came through the veil before that were normal size? Yes. Okay. 
So it has come through the veil. So there's a gap in the water then. Look at it and go, so some there, there's a, a tear in the veil somewhere in the river. Um, but the whole river's purple, so I'm not entirely sure how to find it. And she kind of looks down at Balios opener in her hand like... New guy's gonna freak if this thing starts talking, isn't it? <laughs> but he's not near you right now, so you're okay. Okay. Yeah, I I'm, I'm down that. at the riverside trying to investigate this fish. <laughs> I'll unwrap and go... Opener? Yes. There seems to be a tear in the veil in this river. Can you tell where it is? There is no tear. There was, but no more. Oh. Oh. So why is this thing out at night? Oh, wait, no. And Arya is going to run over to the river and be like, Malik Sire, when you said the sky, when you said your dream had purple in the sky, was it a dream or were you awake? I'm pretty sure it was a dream. Like, no one else was there, only Selig's shell. So, and I knew that he was sleeping next to me for most of the night, so I can assume it was a dream. I think this fish is only in the river on the nights when the sky and the river turn purple. Hmm. Well, does that mean that at some point it's just going to go away? I think so. Uh, Opener says that there was a tear in the veil in the river, but there isn't one anymore. It's already been sealed. By who? What's an opener? Someone on the other side, I guess. Uh, it's it's a friend. friend. Arya, a look, having heard Malik's uh, ponder. Oh, um, it's it's a meditative technique. Um, <laughs> you consider opening your mind, and uh, things can come to you. Uh, it, it, uh, I'll teach you it sometime. We, we, our group is very proficient. It's, it's, it's a new thing. Picked it up on our way around the circle, you know. A loop. Yeah, the loop, of course. <laughs> so Jack's just shaking his head. Just but no. Um, I don't know what it is. Is. I'm almost something. tempted to make you roll off for uh, for convincing <laughs> levels of bullshit. <laughs> that seems fair to me, yes. Yeah. Yep. Do you want to go for it? <laughs> yeah, we might as well. Yep. So who's rolling what? Persuasion, I see. Um, Perception? So, I'll be back. So Sil Silic will roll Deception. Uh, and Malachi will roll perception. I've got eleven, and I have seven. <laughs> <laughs> I love the idea of well, it was a terrible lie, but the other guy wasn't paying attention, so that's fantastic. But, it kind of but, balances yeah. out, the, I guess. the other, the other guy still thought it was plausible somehow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot right. of things going on right now. It's it's just yeah. convincing bullshit in the moment. <laughs> um, so yeah, I guess with that in mind, <laughs> with <laughs> with you convinced, um, yep. <laughs> looking at this fish, I'm I'm half tempted to wake these fishermen up, and maybe they could catch it and take it back. I mean, if it's never been seen further downstream, then it, perhaps it just goes through another one of these portals or whatever it's come come through before the night is over. But it could feed the village for a week. If Kuji here is saying it tastes good, then the, the guys are right here. 
Well, the, pro the, the problem is probably that uh, the guys are right here, but their entire arsenal is the nets that it's they already broken. were already, already broken, broken yesterday. And how are we going to transport it? Well, there's a hale and hearty bunch here. I'm sure if we help them, we could get that thing back. But just an idea. I I don't object on principle. It's um, just that logistically, it's a little bit of an issue. Well. Logistics be damned. If it's causing problems, then it's our job to deal with it, right? I mean... It's broken net one. Did anybody see where it emerged? If we could just simply tell the fishermen to move away from this area. It came from true? downstream, as far as you can tell, because it's heading upstream towards their repaired nets. We should pull up the net. Mm. Pull up the net till it goes past, then put it back down and see. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's not a bad idea. Yeah, let's try that. Okay. You can stamper past it. You move faster than it does. It's in absolutely no hurry at all. <laughs> um, and you can get to the nets and. A quick look at them tells you you'll need to pull them in rather than uh, rather than yeah. lift them up. Mm -hmm. That's um, fine. But you can do that without any problem at all. Um, so pull the nets in, and you pretty much just gonna stand and watch it go past you. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, I might follow it upstream. Okay. Actually. Yeah, I'll follow it. Yeah, we'll put the nets back and then we'll follow after. Yeah. The river's, yeah. Is the river still purple? Like, is the intensity changing as we're kind of, if you look up the river, is the whole thing lit up? Or is it just this one area? Like, what's um, The river is purple in both directions as far as you can see. As we're kind of travelling along then, Silic asks Kuji, is, is this the colour of water of where you come from? It seems that the whole river itself has changed. Only at night. Oh. Strange. Um, are we are, as you are, <laughs> Heading up upstream ahead of the rest of the party. Um, you get a decent way um, ahead of the great fish. Mm -hmm. And opener, which you hadn't have, haven't yet asserted that you've put away anywhere. Nope. I'm speaks from out. your hand. Oh. Wielder. Yes. Let the way be opened. How do I open the way? Simply point and speak. I shall do what opener says. <laughs> and presumably point at the river and say let the way be opened okay where on the river are you pointing ahead of the giant fish okay a purple tear forms directly in front of the fish spanning both the space above the water line and you can see it shimmering beneath the water line okay. and as the rest of the party move up and into sight the great fish disappears into the rift that you created realizing what's happening Silic kind of steps in front of Malaxire 
and goes, so about that um, mind thing I was telling you about, don't, um, it looks like the fish is okay, but, and then tries to distract, because this ruse is desperate to keep up. <laughs> oh, oh, slick. As I can hear this, I will then, uh, again, pointing, let the way be closed. And the tear seals shut. Works. Yeah, that's exactly how it works. The tear closes over behind the fish. And the river runs clear once more. Oh, that's nice. Now we're back to normal again. That's great. Yes, it looks like everything's okay. So well, I'll, I'll tell you about that thing another time, Marek, sir. Oh, I'm sorry to keep stopping <laughs> starting. <laughs> No, 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 no! Like, <laughs> like, I definitely saw. I definitely saw you pointing, uh, saying uh, something. Aria, like, um, would, do you want to explain? Yeah, like, you two can explain to each other, and we can go and have a nap. Yes, yes, we'll we'll leave. We'll leave no, you to it. I think I think we'll have everyone involved here because <laughs> this oh. is because this is something's definitely dodgy. I'm I'm probably I might be the best one to explain. Yeah, I I'm not gonna explain much for you. So like, Let just me sleep, very but guilty. tomorrow <laughs> I am not doing anything. No, I'll make you breakfast. I got rolls, it's good. Okay, that's fine. It's good. I got you, Ari. So let me go back to camp. I can sit down next to the fire and be like, right. Where to start? Day one. Not long after coming into this area, we awoke to purple skies. And we could see each other, we could interact with each other, but there were purple skies. And then there were noises. And there was someone on the rooftop of the inn. And someone. Tried to... Like, what did they look like? Who were they? Um, they kind of looked like a giant shadow person. It was very odd. Um, and we... Uh, we chased them, we managed to interact with them. Um, and they said some... Some things that made absolutely n no sense at the time. Some, some cryptic, semi-prophetic nonsense. Yeah, yeah, that sort of thing. Um, uh, and the next day we, uh, were asked to, or the day, that day, the next day we were asked to go to a turnip farm. This is where we met Kuji. Um. Yeah, what's, what is, what is the deal with, with Kuji? Kuji is travelling with us until we can find a way for her to safely get home. But whoever it, whatever Wait. it is that's doing the purple skies uh, seem to be pleased that she's with us. Certainly she's been very helpful to us. Um, so we met Kuji because we were asked uh, to go and help on a farm with a case of disappearing turnips. Right. So... Basically, in the field, when they tried to harvest the turnips, it's like they got sucked underground and disappeared. So, Selix's a, a very strong person, so he was pulling on a turnip to bring it up, and it was, there was a lot of resistance, and it was hard, and then, when the turnip came free, Kuji came with it. Kuji is also a turnip farmer, but not here. Then where? Somewhere that the the continent looks almost ident the outline of the continent and things are identical to here, and things can come and go between those two worlds, but. 
not very easily. Oh, and there are different gods in that world. But gods they know plural. that... Plural. And could you, could these people have house shrines to the seer of the gods? Who is called Inensis. One of the gods seems to be called Balioth. And I hold up the dagger and go, this is called Balioth's Opener. So, you're telling me that you have the artifact of some strange foreign god that shouldn't exist, that doesn't exist, but that seems, but given that you were pointing it at a lake that had turned purple with a gigantic unnatural fish in it, and managed to make the fish disappear is clearly some kind of magical artifact. Correct? That is a that is certainly a parsimonious explanation of it, yes. We didn't want to keep this from you, of course, but you can understand that the, these experiences might seem a tad blasphemous. We, we don't want to panic more, either. More, more than a tad. Well, as, as a paladin, I have been shaken by it, but uh, my faith in Armand is strong still. We, we, we are yet to truly see evidence of anything other than his greatness. Mm. Opener. Yes. The fuck is that? <laughs> <laughs> this is our new companion, Malik Sire. Greetings. Do you hold strong opinions about tableware? I hold many strong opinions about many things. Tableware isn't one of them. Then perhaps we can find better ground than their erstwhile companion and I. And the dar was awfully snarky. <laughs> <laughs> I miss him. I hope he's okay. Ah, I'm sure he is. I'm sure he's sleeping somewhere. <laughs> Thank you for helping to clarify some things, Opener. You are welcome. Please assure your companion that Anensis is not entirely displeased with him. I, I mean, cool, I guess. <laughs> Nemesis is the seer. Yes, of another god that shouldn't exist. It mm. appears as though there is another version of this world. And it overlaps. But things can't usually go from one place to the other. Although we found quite a few places where it's happened. So, things can't necessarily travel, except for Kuji and the dagger and that giant fish. Uh, we've also had some horrific, voracious red rabbits and oh. another shoal of fish. <laughs> Excellent. So we have a an invasion <laughs> effect of... Oh. Well, aside from the rabbits, I, d I don't think they were particularly aggressive. No. And even at that, the rabbits were trying to eat. Yeah. They, they were time. horrendously voracious. But, you know, it's not. Oh, yeah. this, this is not a military invasion. They are not trying to attack us. They just kind of live like we are. I mean, when a uh... 
let me think. When an anteater invades a termite mound, would that not be considered an invasion, even though it's just trying to live? Like, doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be a good thing, does it? One pack of rabbits against a whole world is slightly different from an anteater invading a termite mound. But do we know if there's any anteaters on the other side? Gucci hasn't mentioned any. Hmm. But also, you can see why we feel that Kuji has been very helpful in explaining some of this. Yes, I can understand that. I know this is quite a shock. Yeah, there's a, perhaps, a like, lot to think about. You are welcome to to take your sleep for the night, and we can answer any more questions in the morning. Hmm, that may be for the best. Does anyone have anything to drink? <laughs> Hell, I've got a water skin, so I can offer nope. that. Nope. Jack's nope. trouble with alcohol, but he's asleep, <laughs> so... And he does not have alcohol with him, unfortunately. He only has bacon rolls. That's <sighs> fine. Table that for later then. Yeah, I think I will I will retire for the night, take my take what sleep I can get. <laughs> I shall keep watch. Although it's not I'm not expecting there to be much else happen. Given yeah. that the river is Calm. the correct <laughs> colour for this world again. Yeah, we can continue the, the watch scheme, I think, for the rest of the night, irrespective of whether or not anything's going to happen. <laughs> Seems reasonable. Okay. Um, your watch has passed uneventfully, um, and we will bring our evening here to a close at the end of your watch, Silic. And we'll resume next time with a hearty fish breakfast. Oh, no. Which hopefully oh, no. itself will not raise any questions. <laughs> <laughs> so. Any final thoughts? That was a good life. A lot to reflect on. <laughs> good bit of combat as well. I mean, we got to nearly the end of the second day of Malik Sire being with us without having to explain things. Nearly. Nearly. That's not too bad. That's not you didn't bad. run for the hills either, so... No, but he there, might be about to time. report us all as heretics. <laughs> he might, but then he would have to report himself as a heretic as well. He's already reporting himself as a murderer, so... <laughs> Accidental death. Accidental death. Yeah. I think that's going to weigh on Silic for a little while. <laughs> yeah. It probably should, to be fair. <laughs> I expected you to have to kill him. I didn't expect you to manage to do it accidentally through incompetence. <laughs> I I will be giving you all basic <laughs> restraint training. Jack is Jack is Jack Jack wasn't even involved. He got <laughs> he got the knee out, he got him gagged. He was doing his job. He was fine. Flash the teeth out. <laughs> Better than murdering him. Spells with the verbal component are harder to pronounce if you don't have any teeth suddenly. It's true. <laughs> that was helping. Well, we shall leave it there then. Okay. Dragon, would you like to do the honours? Yeah, so this was a game with by Penance RPG. Uh, we are an actual play podcast with some random 
episodes of other things thrown in. Um, you can find us usually either here or on all your podcasting apps. We're on social media as at Penance RPG. Uh, our GM, Lunar Wolf, uh, is also a variety streamer. And the link for that is in the chat. Uh, same for Eden, who has uh, clone hero streams and some other stuff occasionally. Yeah, now and again. Random things. Okay, um, we are very lucky because we are sponsored by uh, a UK dice company and now a local gaming store, which is D and Dice. Um, they're based in Loughborough, um, and you can get ten percent off with them using the podcast name Penance RPG at checkout. It's currently again in chat, or uh, you can. Oh yeah, and they have free delivery within the UK. Or you can get 20% off at Gem Hammer and Sons Gaming. And ah, yes. So Twitch doesn't like uh anything that's not the most simple form of link. <laughs> so uh you can just go to gemhammer.com and then use uh the discount code um in the uh, the just the wow in the code use the code at checkout to get your twenty percent off. Um, we our next uh our next RPG game will be on Sunday with Dark Tide, which is an a homebrew alternate Dragon Age timeline, uh, which also stars. Uh, Amy and Eden um, and that is on Sunday early afternoon UK time and we will be back with more Verlastin uh, two weeks from today anyone have anything else? Nope. I think that's the size of it okay in which good. case, I good. need to now look yep. at who to raid. Dragon to find a raid. Uh, it could be good, good night from all of us. Indeed. Good night. Yeah. Indeed. Good night. Good night. Let's go to... Mm -hmm.